to review, today's topic is going to be congenital diaphragmatic hernia. This is mainly a malrotation of the diaphragm which allows the abdominal organs to push into the chest and thereby impeding lung formation and function. And basically it's, it causes a failure of the diaphragm to completely close during development. There's also herniation of the abdominal contents into the chest and this can lead to pulmonary hypoplasia. Now, on general, on your physical exam, you should see tachypnea, retractions, grunting, dyspnea, use of accessory muscles for ventilation, nasal flaring, and on skin, you, you may see signs of cyanosis. Heart sounds are usually shifted away from the affected side, and lungs show decreased or absent breath sounds on affected side. The abdomen is a typical flat scaphoid abdomen in a supine position and this is a high yield concept which frequently appears on the board exam. Now your differential, you want to make sure you rule out hyaline membrane disease, transient tachypnea of the newborn, aspiration syndrome, again all of these have typical uh, chest x-ray findings as well as um, physical exam signs that are different. For congenital diaphragmatic hernia it's important to remember the scaphoid abdomen. You want to rule out TE fistulas um, by passing a nasogastric tube, hypoplastic lung, and congenital heart disease. And, all, and again, other things include metabolic acidosis, hypoglycemia, hypothermia, hypovolemia. And again, when you get your imaging studies, it will help you narrow down your differential. There's two types, and once the bocdalic hernia, which is mainly an opening on the left side of the diaphragm, the stomach and the intestines usually move up into the chest cavity, okay? Whereas in the Morgagini hernia, it usually involves a opening of the right side of the diaphragm. The liver and the intestines usually move up into the chest cavity. So again, the key thing here is the left-sided one is called Bocdalic hernia, whereas the right-sided hernia is called Morgagini hernia, okay? In terms of your diagnosis, you want to get a chest x-ray as soon as you can, all right? And also possibly consider getting an echo, but chest x-ray is the first line. For blood tests, you want to look at serum alpha fetoprotein levels if you can get those. And, you know, some studies have shown that these levels are decreased in patients with congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Now let's take a look at these two films here. This is the initial film here and you can see um, you know there's loops of bowel there's loculated gas pattern um, and also the heart and the mediastinum are kinda like displaced to the right uh, you can see there's hypoplastic lungs and you know an atelectasis of the unaffected lung and also um, a nasogastric tube which is a little bit hard to see here um, but it's there and again here is a repeat um, x-ray and this is after the nasogastric placement and suction um, and you can see that the bowel loops are revealed in the left chest here and so chest x-ray is a must again an echocardiography may help you with the diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension but it's not accurate in determining the severity of the pulmonary hypertension as compared to cardiac catheterization so if you feel that you really need an echo then go for it um, but the chest x-ray is necessary. In terms of the treatment, again, you want to reduce mortality and morbidity, and so, you know, intubation and soft mechanical ventilation, um, which involves spontaneous mechanical ventilation and minimal inspiratory pressure settings with permissive hypercapnia. You want to delay surgical repair until hemodynamic, ventilatory, and acid-based stabilization is achieved. Also, avoid ipsilateral chest tube placement, which can cause negative pressure gradients, reducing lung deflation, leading to lung injury and barotrauma. And avoid mask and bag, which causes the you know, stomach to be distended. For preoperative procedures, you want to make sure that chest tube is placed if there's a pneumothorax on the unaffected side. And gastrointestinal decompression via nasogastric or oogastric tube, as we talked about on the previous x-ray. Now surgery usually involves reduction of the herniated contents through the abdominal incision and can immediately relieve distress. Um, again, you know, it helps repair the hernia defect by an expiratory laparotomy. 
to diagnose any associated congenital anomalies as well. And um, the chest tube is in the affected hemithorax can uh, help you develop a gastrostomy for GI decompression. These are our references and please visit www.comlexflashcards.com for more cases, vignettes, and more lectures on complex board exam preparation. Good luck.